five, six minutes. We're good. You can have them back. So, just like a reminder, we'll just try to keep the conversation well, normal down. level. Yeah. Okay. okay. Kind of help our mics out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, everything's Sounds cool. good. Yeah. All right. So, Perfect. Yeah, I'm a little bit of time to uh, get it set. Do you want me to count it down or do you like counting down? I'll, I'll count it down. Okay. We are ready to rumble. We'll go in four, three. Hey there, friends. Jim Miller coming at you with another episode of the Free Ride Show presented by Envy. Get a chance to sit down with our friend Eddie Anderson. Bro, welcome to San Diego. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Um, this is, in many ways, this event is what kicked off gravel for me. And yeah, so I couldn't be, couldn't be more excited to be back. Kicked off in fine fashion, I gotta say too, because you had a very impressive second place finish here in 2019. Yeah, second place against Pete, so it, it's game on this year in 2021. <laughs> and if that was your first run through, not a bad way to go through your your entree into the world of dirt and, and you know mixed surface racing. No, nah, well, yeah, thank you. It's a bit, uh, it feels a bit different coming back here this year with so many more big names on the start list. But yeah, I couldn't be more excited to race and. Um, yeah, it, it's just let's, really... let's not downplay it at all. You're one of the big names. Oh, well, man. You're, I'm just, you're... It's really cool how this event has grown over yeah. the years. Yeah. Um, let's go back to that 2019 event. Um, we talked a little bit about it when we were sitting down in Kansas, but the way that played out, was it surprising to you or were you there and knowing this is where I belong? I, I can compete and I can contend at that level. Um, I think a little bit of both. Uh, I felt... Um, I was, Pete definitely gapped me on some of the climbs in 2019, but I like turned sort of to my mountain bike background and caught him on a few of the downhills and the last downhill actually into the finish mm -hmm. in 2019 is where I caught Pete um, and he attacked me again and I, I had nothing left in the tank. But yeah, so I think it was a good, um, good confidence booster for the rest of the year and showed me like that this gravel scene is something I'm, is super excited about pretty can be pretty good at and competitive in and um yeah just a cool event all around so and obviously your alpha and phoenix team supports this they they want you to come here they want you to do well and that's a big shift from the old mentality of a lot of the pro tour teams like they wouldn't want people and, and their athletes going to do races like this but now there's a big focus on that because yeah. they see the value and the exposure that it can increase the team and also the individual athletes definitely i think i mean this is event is probably the biggest event I'll race this year. We have over 4,000 participants um, at the events, which is super cool. Obviously a great place to uh, represent the team and represent the sponsors, get the word out. Um, and everyone's so gumptious about cycling here and yeah. about the event. Uh, it, it, the, the atmosphere is second to none. And yeah, Alpeson has always prided themselves on being a multidisciplined team. and. So adding gravel to the calendar is, it's only natural, but I couldn't be more excited to be that rider that is doing it for him. Let's go back to Unbound real quick. Um, if it were a world tour race, it'd be by far the longest, longer than Milan San Remo, 200 miles. Uh, how did it go? Like, what did you feel like? It, obviously never, no one's ever raced that, that distance. Yeah. Um, for you personally, how did it go? We saw you at a couple of the checkpoints and you were right in there. And, and um, what was that experience like on those really rough roads of Kansas? Yeah. Um, I think I went in with the right mindset. I went in with a very open mind, not knowing what was going to happen, but knowing it was going to be an epic day on the bike. And um, after two flat tires in the first hour and a half, I definitely embraced uh, that and chased and chased and chased and finally caught my Canyon teammate, Jeremiah Bishop. And um, we chased for, I, we probably chased for five hours and finally caught, like we, we got back into the, the top, like four through eight riders. Um, and it was the second group on the road and instantly flatted again. And it was the most discouraging thing, but, um, you know, I kept my head more or less up and, um, a few more flat tires later, just plugged and chugged all the way to the line. So I feel like whatever race you have there, it's an epic day on the bike. And yeah, I'll never forget that. But it's so different than what you might be used to on any world tour race. You could raise your hand and pull over. Oh, yeah. You got to pull out, get the bag out, plug the hole and get back going in it. So we're not maybe not used to now that we're at this. Exactly. No, it's something you, you definitely talk to like 
some of uh, the pure roadies out there and be like, wait, if I do that race, I have to change my own flat tire. I can't just tell, there's no team car following yeah. it. Yeah, Wave so, a bottle and someone yeah. rolls up and hands <laughs> you a fresh. There's no sticky bottles in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so even post Kansas, a couple of big races for you, some good results. Uh, where where you been? Um, I know you were up in Oregon yeah. and then you were trusher, or Crusher of the Trusher last week. Yeah, first was Oregon Trail and um, what an awesome race. Like um, not only like we raced full gas, but it was felt like a party around the campground and really like taking a dip in the, the river every night with your fellow racers was was awesome. Um, camping for a week and yeah, second overall there. So it was a good result. And then um, then I did a mountain bike race, the Firecracker 50, um, which was fun. That was in Colorado and, uh, and also second place and then third place at Crusher. So been racing a good bit um, between um between unbound and now and but yeah i feel pretty good on the bike and ready to let it rip tomorrow so we'll see what happens we're up in utah at altitude getting a little 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 bite from the altitude feeling a little better training there we're going to bring that into san diego you you know the course you've seen it um what's your expectation of how it's going to play out i know you can handle the heat pretty well definitely have the bike handling skills but how do you see the race playing out yeah um i think Obviously, the single track is al always going to be a selective section, and you'll see selections being made there and the Sandy Bandy section. I'm sure Black Canyon people will suffer in the heat. I think it's going to just be a war of attrition all day. Riders will be falling off the back, um, and I hope to be there as long as possible. And I think that really the race will probably come down to the last 30 miles or so. You'll probably see a, a winning move. Um, sometime between 30 miles to go in the finish line whether it be a sprint or someone gets away on double peak who knows um you're a college student uva go who's ah go who's um how do you balance the rigors of college life especially at a university like uva with the training and the racing and the traveling that you have to do to focus on that how does that that's got to be a tremendous uh weight to to pull off yeah it's it's definitely been difficult um and i've definitely had to make some sacrifices um on the school front a little bit <laughs>